Hi everyone, I am excited to share this topic with you today. We're going live to talk all about work-life balance and it's one area that I know that we all struggle with and it seems to be, you know, um, more relevant for, for business owners that tend to work from home and run their own business. So, I mean, you know, as sole traders, we, uh, we pour ourselves into our work and we tend to, to put everything else off to the side. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about that work-life balance and I'm gonna share lots with you. Uh, if you are tuning in, let me know where you're watching from. I always love to know where you are. And yeah, if you've got any questions about this, let me know, pop them into the comments below because we can answer those as we go along. I've got a keynote put together, again, I do love my keynotes, and I've got a lot of information that I do wanna share on this topic because I want to help those of you that are struggling to, to find that balance between you know, your, your home life, your family time, um, and your own personal time as well, as well as the time that you pour into your business. So lots of information here that I wanna share with you, which is pretty cool. And I apologize that we are running an hour late today, but... Uh, your hair looks good though. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> needed a haircut. It was the 11th of February that I last had my hair cut. So now that we're in May, I think Oh, we have someone from Canada, we have someone from Argentina, Vancouver, fantastic. Hi everyone, Mexico, this is amazing. So this is a topic that I am really passionate about and it's because I suppose you could say I went through the trenches when it came to work-life balance and finding that balance. To give you a little backstory, you know, I my husband used to work away and he was only home every second weekend and at the time it was when my business was really taking off like it was crazy I was booked out six months in advance and I was doing as many shoots as I physically could and it was crazy trying to keep up with the workload but I wanted to be the best that I could be and I was so driven and so focused on achieving you know, amazing results. The problem was, at the time, I didn't really value my time. So all I wanted to do was be busy. And I thought that running a successful business was being busy. And yes, whilst that is the case, you always wanna have those clients coming in and a steady stream of clients to make you successful within your business. But there are so many different elements that will impact the success of your business, which is what we're gonna talk about today in terms of finding that balance. But, you know, what happened to me was that I, I poured so much of myself into my business because I was so stressed with being basically a single parent to three children. And at the time, you know, the twins were very young and they were, you know, toddlers. They hadn't even started school yet. And, and Georgia was only two years older than them. So it was, hard work running a full-time business and having three kids at home and Georgie would obviously go to school but the twins were only in childcare three days a week so it meant that I was non-stop and I literally stared at my screen for what seemed like the entire waking hours of my life and I kept telling my kids that I was almost done and I kept telling them to go and play and I missed so much and I think this is where, when I say that I'm so passionate about this, it's because I understand how much it impacted my, my family and my life, my own personal life and my own self-esteem and self-confidence because whilst I was pouring all of my energy and attention into my business, I completely let myself go. I put 30 kilos on and I stopped exercising. I stopped eating right. I stopped stopped socializing, I stopped going out and doing things and all I did was focus on my business and obviously just try to get through each day with three kids and then when my husband would come home on the every second weekend I'd say oh my god they're yours and he'd say I haven't slept for however many days I need to just catch up on some sleep and some rest and and it was just this constant cycle of treading water and not going anywhere 
And there were, there were a few different factors as well that impacted that. Number one, I didn't price myself appropriately. And when I say I didn't value my time, I was cheap compared to a lot of photographers. And that's why I was so busy and I was booked out in advance because I was good at what I did. Um, and I wasn't saying that I'm, I was great, but I, I was producing you know, a high level of professional standard within my work, but I just wasn't being paid for it. So I burnt out quite quickly. I got to a point where I was angry, I was frustrated. Oh, that's pulling on that lead there on the back. And I, I wanted to give up. It got to a point where it was like, do you know what? Something's got to give here. It's either going to be me um, or it's going to have to be Rob, but we've got to make some big changes right now so that we can survive as a family and that my, so that my business can survive. And I know that there are going to be many of you out there that are going to have gone through that or are currently going through it. So I thought this was a very relevant topic today because we are starting to prepare to come out of this period where we have ceased work operating with our clients. We are starting to get our businesses ready to open back up again when we're allowed to. So let's, let's talk a little bit about this. And like I said, if you've got any questions, pop them into the comments there so I can read them, Garrett can ask them to me, and, um, and we'll talk about this. So at that time when I decided that something had to be done I needed to make a change it was it was focusing on where I was going and I didn't have a clear goal and I didn't have a clear idea of what it was in terms of success and what that meant to me um, whilst I just assumed being busy was great and you know being booked out was great I wasn't earning a living from my business and I was tired and cranky all the time. So what I had to do was sit down, literally sit down and write out what success meant to me. What did I want from my business? And where was I going? I needed to create a clear path so that I knew which direction to go in and how to structure my life a little better. So I mentioned I've got quite a few notes here. Um, when we start to look at what work-life balance is, there is a description in the dictionary <laughs> or Wikipedia, if that's what you want to call it. You know, it's a concept including proper prioritizing between work in terms of your career and your ambition and then your lifestyle, you know, your health, your pleasure, your leisure, your activities, your family and all of those other things that you can possibly do to make you a, a better person each day. And I think that's what we forget to do. We forget about us. And it's very easy to put everyone else in front of you. And I know for all the mums and dads and the parents in the group, you know, we put our family first before us. We always do and we tend to be at the bottom of that pecking order. And, um, do you know what? It's really hard to put yourself first. But do you know when you decide to actually treat yourself well and look after yourself and put yourself back up there in terms of that, that pecking order, everyone else around you is going to benefit from, from that because you will be happier and healthier and you will have a clearer vision of where you want to go. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about. Alrighty, so it doesn't mean you have to have an equal balance, but what it means is that you've got to try to schedule equal number of hours throughout the day on all of your different areas in terms of your work and your personal activities and, um, and find a realistic amount of time that you can schedule and dedicate to all of those things and all of the different hats, I suppose, that we tend to, to wear as parents and business owners, even if you're not a parent, you know, just trying to keep up with everything else and, you know, prioritizing time for yourself as well. And the thing is, what we have to remember is that there is, there is no, um, you know, one, there is no perfect answer for anyone. There is no one size fits all when it comes to this topic. It is all about, finding what works best for you and sticking with it and moving forward. Because what works for someone else isn't going to necessarily work for you because we all have different 
things happening around us in our lives that will impact our ability to do things. Um, you know, different number of kids, ages of our kids, whether we have other family members that we dedicate time to for different reasons. Uh, I know a lot of members of the group, you know, assist other family members with their, with, um, with health and things like that and looking after from a medical point um, other pe people in their life. So you can never compare yourself to anyone else, which I think is going to be something really important to remember. So when we think about obviously dedicating time, like I just mentioned, two different areas, what you've got to do is focus on that time management. And you know what? Today's world is just, it is ridiculous. Um, we are so consumed with the internet. Well, there are more people online today than obviously there have ever been ever. And that's because of um, the ability to communicate directly with anyone from any location in the world. Like when I look at the locations that people are watching from, we've got Mexico, Chile, California, Canada, Virginia, Kansas. I mean, I'm in Australia and we are connecting instantaneously. Like this is crazy. And we get so consumed with the ability to do that that we don't tend to manage our time. And so when we start to sort of think about how we, we can reevaluate the time that we spend doing all of the different things that we have to do throughout the day, that's when we can focus on time management. So if your schedule is interrupted, which means, um, you know, you're you're sort of getting sidetracked and you're finding other things. You go to the internet to do something and all of a sudden you see something else and you end up on another Facebook page or another group and then all of a sudden you think, what, was I, what did I come here for? Um, if you are continually being interrupted in terms of your schedule, then that is, um, you know, your time management basically becomes useless. And this is where we've got to prioritise. And it is hard to prioritise. So. When we go through all of the different tasks that we have to do in terms of time management, scheduling and structure is going to be your biggest, um, your biggest focus. Because if you're not focused on creating a schedule and a structure, then you'll just sit down and go, okay, I'm here to work, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, and you won't get any of it done because you, what will happen is you will become so overwhelmed with the amount of um, tasks and things that you have to do that you tend to kind of have that area of your brain where you put things that need to be done later. You know, they're not really urgent, so I can do those later. And you'll eventually get to them and you keep putting them off. But then there are going to be those tasks which are going to require more time and more thought. And they're the tasks that we often tend to put off that we shouldn't because they require so much more time and thought processes to go into them. So when, we, when I talk about that structure and schedule, I can't emphasize enough how important it is. At the beginning of every single day that you go to work in your business, and I need to really emphasize those words, you go to work in your business. Sit down, write a list of everything that you want to accomplish that day. If it's a Monday, write a list of everything that you want to accomplish that week and then break it down into daily tasks. Then what I want you to do is focus on each of those tasks and dedicate time for them. So basically what I do is I will write out all of the different things that I want to do that day and I will then allocate the amount of time that it should take me to do. So if it's, oh, I've got to follow up with such and such, that's a quick phone call, five minutes. Write five minutes next to it. If it's editing a gallery, um, then I know that that's going to take me a couple of hours, two hours, and I dedicate that amount of time. And then what I'll do is if um, I've got to order some prints or print something, That'll take me probably 30 to 40 minutes, depending on how many prints and whether or not they need to be packaged up or whatever. So you know how long it takes you to do each task. You just have to write it down. Once you've written down a time frame for each task, then I want you to prioritize what's more important in terms of all of those tasks. What do you have to do that day and list them from the top from one 
down to the bottom of the page. Put them in a priority um, of how they need to be achieved and cross them off, tick them off, give yourself a reward. At the end of every task, stand up, go for a walk around your house, get a drink of water, make a cup of tea, whatever it is that you need to do, but then come back and refocus. Um, if they're small tasks that only take you five, 10 minutes, keep moving through those small ones. But the only way that you will achieve all of the things that you need to do that day, and I'm, and I'm talking, even if it's um, things outside of your business, if you know you've got to take your dog to the vet, if you know that you've got a haircut, if you know that you've got to do all of those things, you have to dedicate time within your structured working hours and then obviously time outside of those business hours to do all of your other tasks. And it's so easy to do. But the thing is, when we don't do it, it's all going on up there. We often feel crazy because we're so overwhelmed, we don't know which way is up and we tend to go around in circles. And then what we do when we get overwhelmed, we're not even aware that we're doing it. We go and do something else that doesn't require our attention. We waste it on the internet. So if you get emails in, dedicate, after you've done your list, you're prioritizing, dedicate a set amount of time in the morning to respond to your emails. Your clients need a response. Then once you've done that, turn the internet off if you've got to edit a gallery. So you're not getting sidetracked. Because when we talk about time management, if you are being constantly interrupted throughout your day, your time management becomes useless. Prioritizing is hard when you're, you know, um, when you're um, overwhelmed and you're not organized. And that's why we keep talking about that structure. Our ability to be productive is directly proportional to our ability to obviously relax as well. So when we are overwhelmed, we get anxious, we're not relaxed. When we are organized and we're structured, we tend to relax into each task and get them done. And we can stay focused a lot easier because we're not overwhelmed and thinking about all of those other things that you all, all of a sudden come to mind that you need to do because you've already done it at the beginning of your day and you've set out your day in terms of the tasks that you need to do. So when you get to a point of, um, you know, having a clear mind around, you know, being organized, you will achieve a stress-free, productive workflow. And that's the key. It's about working smarter, not harder. So. You, you know, there's this little saying, do it, delegate it, defer it, drop it rule. Write that list out. Do it, delegate it, defer it, drop it. If you can delegate a task within your day to someone else within your household, delegate it. Like my kids have so many different duties throughout the day. It's, it's incredible. Like they unpack the dishwasher, they take the rubbish out, they wash the dogs, they feed the pets, they do all of that stuff. I don't have to do it. Like they vacuum, they mop. Um, they have to learn to obviously work. And the thing is, when you identify, you know, how valuable your time is, then you can start to delegate it and stop trying to do everything yourself. Because when you try to do everything yourself, you do become ridiculously overwhelmed and you also get burnt out. And that's not a great place to be because you then start to, you know, come, you don't come from the right place. You don't come from a place of love or happiness. You come from a place of frustration and anger. And then that energy that you put out is what everyone around you will feed off and how it affects the people around you is sometimes not very clear, but we have to be aware of that. So this is why when you start thinking about your time management, you, you can start to relax into each task. So write that down, do it, delegate it, defer it, or drop it in terms of your to-do list. All right, so when we look at our next slide there, um, as photographers, as creatives, and the funny thing is, I was at my hairdressers this morning and um, the guy that cuts my hair, he owns two salons and has 20 staff. And we had this great conversation today because I haven't seen him since February. And, and he, was, 
he was in the UK when everything happened and they declared it as a pandemic. So he had to come back. He was over there for a family wedding. And anyway, we were telling each other stories about you know our travels and things like that prior to, to obviously all the border closes, closures. And we started to then talk about the hairdressing industry and the photography industry. And when we talk about business, he was saying to me how incredible it was like they have an association, a hairdressing association, and it's, it's run very, very well here in Australia. So obviously there's a lot of guidance and things like that. With the photography industry, there are different associations out there, but what I found was that none of them were doing really anything, unless you were obviously a member. So when, you, when we, we talked about the business side of things today, it was interesting because he said that there are so many hairdressers that have had to close their, their salons and put off their staff or stop paying their staff because they hadn't set their businesses up correctly um, to be able to apply for the different government funding allowances that were allocated. And he said it was really fascinating to see that, but he said, you know, your, your business is not going to survive just because you are a good hairdresser. You have to know how to run a business. And this is where we can become very, very overwhelmed. So I've been focusing a lot on sharing, you know, the business side of things throughout the past seven and a half weeks because, you know, they're areas that we tend to put off because we don't want to do them or we don't know exactly how to do them or we just, we put them off out of fear or anxiety. We just think everything's gonna be okay. But the thing is, it's not. And the photography industry, when he was talking about this this morning, was very, it was sounding very, very similar because you might be a brilliant photographer, but unless you know how to run your business, you're, you're going to have a failing business. And only 5% of all photography businesses survive after the first five years because you get to a point of burnout, you get to a point of um, not knowing how to, to put the right policies and procedures in place to build the foundations and, and create a, a strong, successful business. So when we talk about time management, it is one of the most important elements of running a business, structuring your time. When you go to work to work for someone else, you go to work for a set amount of hours. Most people that have a, you know, a, a full-time job work Monday to Friday, nine to five, for example. That's an example. Obviously, there are different working hours out there for different jobs and so forth. But you work a set amount of hours each week. So when you go to that job, you go and you work and you get paid. You also get time off, you get sick days, you get um, retirement fund money in terms of superannuation paid into um, different accounts. You get, um, there's so many different benefits depending on where you are based. So when you sit down to work on your business and you prioritize your daily tasks, you are going to work like you would for someone else. You wouldn't go to work for someone else and then just think, oh yeah, I don't feel like doing that today and start scrolling through Facebook. Sometimes. Garrett says sometimes. <laughs> but the thing is, if I went to work for someone else and in my prior life, I say prior life, but I was a personal assistant. There is no way that I would have sat there and gone, oh, I don't feel like doing that filing today or I don't feel like writing that report or I don't really feel like going in and taking notes for my boss because he's being a real jerk today. Um, you don't do that. So this is the thing. Depending on how successful you want your business to be, depending on your goals and what it is that you want to achieve, and why you run a business, it's going to depend on how much time and effort you put into it and how you dedicate that time to doing it. So when we think about photographers, and I've got a little sidetracked there, but I thought it was a really great thing to bring up. Um, when we think about photographers, a lot of people, when they come into the industry, they look at us, and I know a lot of people have thought for me, and even people who aren't photographers, they look at my lifestyle and they're like, man, it must be so amazing to travel the world and, 
you know, go to all those amazing locations and look at all of the beautiful photos you're taking and oh, you're out partying again, you're at another thing. Do you know what it might look like that on the internet? But I can assure you, I work <laughs> and I work really, really hard. So the realistic chart of what it actually looks like for me to be a business owner, you know, 12% of what I do is taking photos. 28% is editing emails on my computer. And then my bookkeeping, taxes, insurance, banking. I've got meetings, communications with clients. The way that I communicate with my clients is all comes back to service and experience. So I dedicate time to that communication process. Album designing, if that's something that you do. But for me, album design and production, that's all about ordering the products and packaging them. Social media, blogging, things like that. I've got to dedicate time to doing that and getting it done. Networking with other businesses and other photographers within the industry so I stay up to date with what's happening in the world around me. Um, you know, updating my cameras, my computers. Good Lord, I hate updating the software on any, any of my um, plugins or applications or my computer operating system. But it's got to be done and you've got you've to continually look at those areas. Marketing, wow. And I'm not just talking about your social media and your blogging, I'm talking about you know, other areas to market your business and thinking of new ways to get more clients in the door. And it is crazy all the different areas that we've got to focus on. So whilst people assume that that's what the life of a, of a photographer is, who gets to travel the world and, and do amazing shoots and things like that, that's all they're physically seeing on the internet, on social media, places like that. What they don't see, what doesn't get shared, are photos of me doing my taxes, photos of me creating an album for someone, photos of me um, blogging, typing. You don't see that, so you just assume that it's not happening. But I can assure you that each and every single day, it is dedicated to all of the different tasks that I have to do to be able to achieve the level of success that I am looking for within my business. And like I keep saying, it's gonna be different for every single one of you. Some of you might just wanna be a hobbyist. Some of you might just want to, you know, um, do a little bit of part-time here and there around your family, depending on your life circumstances. Some of you might wanna dive into this industry and run a full-time studio and create an amazing experience for your clients and achieve um, different goals in terms of um, whatever it is that you're looking for. So that's something that I want everyone to really consider because we do have to do a lot. And the thing is, you can't do everything, all right? You can do it, but you can't always do everything if you don't focus and structure and dedicate time to doing those tasks. Um, so this is where we start talking about working smarter and not harder. I'm gonna take a breather because I have not stopped talking. You, you I'm can, so sorry. You can take a breather. We've got quite a few people watching us. Um, Deborah doesn't think you're out partying, but she would love to do what it is that you do. <laughs> I do love a good party. Um, I love going to different conferences and events and connecting with other photographers, having conversations with them, having a drink with them, relaxing and learning from them in terms of, I mean, just you can learn so much about someone just from a simple conversation. And it's crazy how many things we have in common, all of us. So it's pretty cool. Um, Shannon Lavell Hearth definitely uses her children to get tasks done and that sort of thing. And she's even put there that they're a team. They are. You know. Oh, they absolutely have to be. Yeah. But the thing is, um, you know, when the kids ask you to do something, I know what my hourly rate is. So if they if they ask me for something, then I'll say to them, well, you, you know, that's going to cost you. <laughs> because I can't see there's, there being a reason why you can't do it. So we, um, you know, a little bit of tough love, but it teaches them as well their own time management and how to um, get things done, especially right now when a lot of um, students uh, are not at school. 
Okay, so when we think about working smarter, obviously prioritizing, looking at the tasks that you've got to get done, get through that list and prioritize them in order. And then create an outline so you've got that, that time frame for each task and dedicate it, break it down. If you've got my social media planners, there are planners in there that are daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly. And the daily ones break it down in time. You can create your own, but the planners are there to be used and they're gonna help you be more efficient and manage your time so much better. Um, and then you've gotta to learn to say no. I don't know about you guys, but do you know, when you have a camera, a lot of people you know, around you, other parents at the school and friends, they, you know, they say, oh, could you just take a couple of photos? I stopped taking my, my professional camera to all of my children's sporting events. I stopped doing that because everyone else would forget theirs or not bring it and they'd say, oh, can you just grab a photo of my child as well? And then they would contact you, oh, do you have any photos? Did you happen to get any photos? And it's like, do you know what? I've got other things that need to be doing. I've got to be doing right now. So I would just say no. I always ask myself when I am doing something for someone else, what's in it for me? So when someone asks you to do something, I want you to ask yourself, what's in it for you? And you know what? Don't be afraid to say no. I learned this listening to Oprah Winfrey. Um, and she said, you know what? I was a yes girl over and over again. I just continually said yes to everyone around me. And then I was scared to say no because they wouldn't like me. And it was interesting because when I heard her talk about this and she said, when I said no for the first time, I literally, she said, felt like, you know, either someone was going to hit me or swear at me or something, but she said everything was okay. So she always said yes out of fear of rejection and that, you know, that person would no longer like them, like her. And that was how I kind of felt as well. I was trying to do everything for everyone, you know, even my own sister um, looking after her kids. I would never say no for anything. Um, my, you know, my friends and things like that. And sometimes you've just got to say no to things that you're not going to benefit from in some way, shape or form. And I'm not talking about, you know, benefiting from a tangible item. I will say yes to a lot of things where I won't physically be given anything or it won't, you know, propel my, my business or anything like that or benefit my business. But I will say yes because sometimes it's good for the soul. Yeah. But you've got to decide that for yourself. If someone is taking advantage of your time, you know, recognize that and start looking after yourself. At the very beginning of this talk, I said, you've got to start putting yourself first because when you don't and you are continually servicing everyone else and not getting anywhere for yourself, you, you just lose all you know, self-confidence within yourself. Um, Duchess would like to know where she can find the social media planner. Oh, newbornposing.com. Go to the business tab. Mm. There's tabs at the top of the page for absolutely everything that you can find. Alrighty. Um, and limit your goals. So don't set unrealistic goals. You've got to be very realistic with what it is that you want. Every year I sit down with my family and I create goals for the next year. We then go over our short-term goals in terms of where we want to be in the next few years. We look at then our long-term goals and we do this every year because if you don't, you won't have a clear idea of where you're headed. And it's, I liken it to getting in a car. You don't, well there are some people that we call Sunday drivers, but when you get in your car you've got a destination. Whether you're using a GPS, a navigating system or whatever it is, you put in that address and you go towards it, you drive towards it. It's the same as having a goal. But the thing is, often when we put in an address, we are faced with roadblocks, we're faced with bumps, sharp turns, we have to deal with all of the other traffic on the road. And that's what it's like to run a business. But the thing is, you won't know where you're going if you don't set yourself some very clear, realistic goals within your business. And you can't base your goals on what someone else is, is working towards. 
they've got to be for you and what you can achieve based on all of the other things that are going on in your life and how they are going to impact your ability to dedicate time to each area of your life in terms of your business and your health and your family and lifestyle. Alrighty, um, and again, it's a constant reminder. If you don't value your time, no one else will. If you just continually say yes to everyone else and you don't value your time and then you put other things off because you're continually doing things for other people, you are not valuing your time. When you are not saying no, you are not valuing your time. When you are not charging appropriately or paying yourself a salary and covering your cost of doing business, you are not valuing your time. When you don't dedicate structured business hours, you are not valuing your time. When you don't prioritize and you don't dedicate time to each task within a big time frame in terms of structured business hours, you are not valuing your time. Um, um, Brooks, Brooks just said there, so many people assumed that I'll do photos for free and that they're doing her a favor. And she's just put in another comment there that she needs to start saying no. No. Yeah, what's <laughs> in it for me? <laughs> That's it. Do you know what? And I, I, the thing is, I do get a lot of people that contact me. So if you are, you know, one of the 50 people that private message me every day with a question, and if I don't get back to you, that's why I created a group on Facebook. I can't physically respond to every single person's question when they email me or they private message me on my social media pages because I'm doing other things. I'm running a business and I'm running a successful business. So that's how I say no, I just don't open them. I open emails from and, and respond to people that I need to respond to and I will often respond to a lot of people, but if you are not a friend, a personal friend of mine on Facebook and you private message me, it goes to the message requests and I try very hard not to go to that folder because there are literally thousands of messages in there and I start to hyperventilate. <laughs> <laughs> so please understand that if you don't get a personal response from me, I'm just busy working in my business. And um, I created a group so that I can be here like this to give people information that will hopefully answer all of your questions. I do Q and A's, I'm present, I scroll through the group when I can, when I dedicate time to scrolling through the group. And that's another key thing to really um, remember. Alrighty, so let's move along here. When we talk about goals and we talk about um, success, what we're gonna focus now on is, I've skipped quite a few of my notes here, but I know I've done this keynote a few times before, so I understand what we're working on. Let me just catch up here a little bit. Alrighty. Yeah, so Duchess has just mentioned there that most people request free photos in return for exposure. Um, I almost went brain dead from being, from doing free family photos. Never, ever again. Yeah. Yes. No, definitely not. Do you know, it's funny, a lot of the parents at my kids' school, they, they all know I, you know, I, my business and things like that. Um, and I will get contacted by you know, one of the mums and they will say, oh, we wanna buy a gift voucher for another mum. And we've collected $250 for a family portrait session. And I go back and I respond with, that's fantastic. I think it's wonderful that you want to gift your friend a session. My packages start at X amount of dollars. Let me know if you want to go ahead and book one of those sessions. I never hear from them, but that's okay. They just don't know what I charge. Because whilst they know my business in terms of the name of my business and what I physically do in my business, they wouldn't have a clue what I charge, because they don't truly value what it is that I do. 
It's interesting. I have done a few shoots where people um, from parents from schools have paid what I charge, and that's okay. You just have to decipher um, what is it worth to you in terms of your time and valuing your time. All right, achievement and enjoyment. Okay, so you can't have one without the other when it comes to this, and it is like a double-sided coin. Trying to live a one-sided life is why so many successful people are not happy. So if you're constantly striving to achieve things, but you're not enjoying your life, um, you will just become unhappy. And that's basically what I've been saying for the past sort of however long we've been going. Oh dear Lord. Minutes. <laughs> I can talk, I'm sorry. But all of this is really valuable. Okay. Um, and they're not nearly as happy as you should be. You've got to decide how happy do you actually want to be? Like, what do you want out of life? Do you want to keep getting up every day and being unhappy? Or do you actually want to enjoy your time? Do you want to live a life, um, you know, of that you deserve? That's basically what it comes down to. And you've got, you can decide that. Um, to succeed, you must make things happen instead of waiting for them to happen because no one's going to do them for you. Anyone can wish to achieve their grand masters. I can't believe that's written there because I've actually, yeah. You've wow. done that since then. But ambitious people set specific goals, take the steps it will take to attain them and begin doing the work to get there. Learning how to set an outcome and performance goals will help you achieve your long-term career ambitions. I wrote this in 2015. I actually wrote right there on the page, anyone can wish to achieve their grandmasters. I did that this year, but it was a goal of mine that I had written down. I wanted to achieve it. I didn't wish it. I worked my ass off, excuse my language, but I worked my butt off to achieve it. Like, that's crazy that I wrote that. And now when I look back, it's always been a goal of mine. So when I say you've got to make them happen instead of waiting for them to happen, this is where we talk about limiting your goals and being very, very realistic with what it is that you want to achieve. I, and you know what? It's confidence as well. Have the confidence within yourself to be able to achieve them. All right. Um, all righty -o. we all have, so the thing is, when we run our businesses and we start our photography businesses, we all have a level of hunger in the beginning that drives us. Um, some a little more than others in the beginning. We don't want work-life balance. We want to be imbalanced. It's what makes us feel alive because we've got that hunger to, to achieve. Unfortunately, you know, we constantly make sacrifices to reach our goals, even without realizing our sacrifices. And that's what I was saying earlier about where I was. I was so hungry to achieve a level of success that I lost focus and, and didn't realize how it was impacting everyone else around me. Um, the, beginner, the beginner's hunger, it starts to dissipate and then we shift into a less frantic and long-term mode. And so comes an either a choice, you feel you need to gamble everything on achieving greatness in some areas, or you commit yourself to balancing out your career with your family, social obligations and your personal interests. If you choose the first option, you need to accept that there will be trade-offs. It will impact other people. You will miss children's sporting events. You will miss school concerts. You will miss um, out on so much life and it will impact your relationships. So you just have to decide what it is that you want. And again, with that really important word, realistic. Someone has said, what is your grandmasters? Yes. So um, with different photography associations, there is different levels that can be earned through their awards programs within, in terms of competitions. So to become a grandmaster, which I did this year at, at WPPI, you need to earn 65 points and achieve X amount of gold awards. I can't remember how many it is. I think it's five golds. And then you have to earn 
one grand, like one um, grand award, which is the overall. So say for example, you've got your portrait category, you've got maternity, newborn, children, um, there's a few other categories in there. Then what they do is there is a winner of each of those subcategories and then the grand award is the, the winner overall. So when you enter a print competition, for example, like WPPI, a silver print, which is a score of 80 and above, gets one point, and a gold gets two points, and a platinum, which is a perfect score of 100, gets three points. So you can see you get very small points, but you've got to get 65 points to get your Grand Masters plus you know, a certain number of gold plus one grand award. And um, only every year, only four of your prints, the, the, the scores that you get, uh, are dedicated towards your Grand Masters. So say for example, this year I entered six prints, my four highest scoring points, the points that I earn from them, whether they're silvers, silver distinctions, golds or so forth only, those four prints go towards my Grand Masters. So I entered WPPI for the first time in 2013 and um, I managed to earn all of the points that I needed in the last eight eight rounds which is pretty cool pretty pretty amazing so I but I set out to do it that was a very long-winded explanation alrighty um, if you choose the second option you know you've got to get over the idea that um, you're not going to go as far in your career as the the people who are going to gamble everything and push themselves but I can assure you that if you structure and prioritize and you set realistic goals, you can actually achieve amazing things. So many years ago, um, I before I wrote this, I created set business hours. So because I realized what was going on, I set business hours so that I only worked when my kids were at school. And I, I structured my business around that. And when they were out of school, I was out of work. The only time I worked when I was at home when obviously they weren't in school was when they were in bed asleep. And if that was just catching up on editing or emails or something like that. So, but what I also did was I priced myself appropriately so I could cover my cost of doing business and I could pay myself the salary that I deserved. And I then only shot the number of sessions that I could physically do to enable more time to dedicate to other tasks so I didn't get overwhelmed, I didn't get overworked and it was an amazing thing to do within my business. It was very scary in the beginning, obviously saying no to clients, no I'm fully booked out or you know charging more, but it worked <laughs> and I'm still sitting here. Alrighty, so in order to succeed your desire for success should be greater than your fear of failure. Um, well, we won't really acknowledge the person that said that, but that is probably one of the, you know, the, my favorite quotes in terms of success. But succeeding as an entrepreneur, it takes hard work and persistence because unfortunately there is no business startup fairy who will magically bestow success on your business and their owners. No one's going to do the work for you and nothing's going to get handed to you on a silver platter, I can assure you. Most successful entrepreneurs follow comparable patterns and they share similar basic characteristics. Hundreds of online artists, I'm sorry, articles and published books claim to obviously know the secrets of success in business, but for the most part, they boil down to the same major points. Passion, perseverance, and a positive attitude tend to set successful entrepreneurs apart. Using these attributes require innate skill sets and some tips to get started. So when you think about all of that stuff, and I had to read it because I didn't want to miss any of it, and I wanted to get it out so that it was easy to understand, it's when you think about the passion, no business will succeed if you are not passionate about it. And I always said that the day that I am no longer passionate about picking up my camera, I will not be a photographer anymore. And that's the thing, I can't do this forever. So I've actually now started to structure my business and incorporate other ways to be able to exit the photography industry one day. You know, we now have real estate. We've got to look at how we can invest in other things so that 
once I stop doing all of this, I'll be able to continue to live a life um, that I deserve, that I've worked hard for. So yeah, this is what I struggled with. Um, overbooked and overworked, my mental health really took a hit. Now I work to work out. Um, Better work-life balance. Perfect. That's um, Brooke. Perfect, Brooke. Like yeah. seriously, it's 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 you. All this is when I say, mind your own business. This is your business, and you are the only one that can set your goals. You are the only one that can set your intentions and determine your values and and create goals to work towards that are for you and your business, no one else. And that's all that should matter. Um, you know, so take into consideration if you're trying to develop a business platform, these elements constitute, the elements that constitute will support a smart strategy for any new business. And it's not about being the best or better than anyone else, it's about being the best you can be. And it's about accomplishment, an aim and a purpose. So reaching a goal, whether it's small or large, should be celebrated as well. You know, you should reward yourself and give yourself a pat on the back. It's okay to do good things. So, um, whoa, that's a big comment. Um, you know, when you set those goals, you don't like to fail. Someone once asked me a question and it was just doing a, a, a talk um, where you open up your studio and people come and they ask you lots of questions. The, th the question they asked was, what was the biggest mistake that you've made as a business owner? And I, I sort of looked at them and I was like, oh gosh, I can't answer that because there are so many. And that's the thing, as business owners, when you don't take any actions, when you don't take any risks, when you don't um, you know, set out to succeed to, to whatever it is that you want to achieve, then the thing is you won't fail because you're not risking anything. So you're living a very safe life. But I can assure you, if you don't take risks, you won't go further. And if you don't fail, you won't learn. When you don't learn, you don't grow, and you don't become better. It's, it's just as, it's as simple as that. Yeah, by the, by the sounds of it, I would say that's what Amy's comment is about. She has learnt very hard. Um, by booking booking weddings, having four babies a week, doing Christmas sessions, spending so much time away from, you know, what it is that was important to her, but she's put there, but time equals money and structure equals better time management. Like that's well, that's my that's my <laughs> thumbs up for your comment there. That, that's Absolutely. Goals, you know? All right, so when we talk about successful people and then we look at unsuccessful people and things like that, like right now we're living in a very, very different time. Um, and obviously we will get through it, but there are going to be some changes and you will have to change and evolve to adapt to the new ways um, and, and things that we've got to implement moving forward within our business. That's fine. But when we think about successful people, they're continually working on themselves and their business. They're continually wanting to learn more so that they do grow um, to be able to reach those, those targets that they're aiming for. But they, um, you know, they, they come also from a very positive place, successful people. They've got a lot of positive energy. Unsuccessful people, you know, they tend to fear change. They don't do much. They've already binge watched many, many, many series on Netflix. They blame others for their failures because how could it have ever been their fault? It's got to be somebody else's fault all the time. Thing is, when you run a business, if something is going wrong in your business, the only person that should be held accountable is you. You are the business owner. Nothing else. When your clients are unhappy, it's not their fault, it's yours. They're unhappy for a reason. You didn't connect, deliver, um, or communicate. So always, you know, going, right, what can I do to change this in terms of that? Um, but they tend to be very angry people and they don't set goals and, um, yeah, we, we know people like that. Like, if you read that list, I know mm -hmm. a lot of people like that. It's, it's kind of sad, really. 
but I'm in the other column. I'm in the successful people's column. You just got to decide which column do you want to be in and make that choice, but do the work to be in that column. There's no in between. All right. When you think about, you know, that, um, that hunger that a new business owner has because they set out, they want to do this, they want to do that, it's that drive, right? But how do you keep that drive going when I talked before about how that drive often sort of, you know, falls by the wayside? Um, determining why you're in business, that question of why, there's a lot of books out there about the why and all of that kind of stuff, but that's actually a very easy question to ask yourself. Why are you in business? Why are you doing what you do? Because when you figure out the why you're in business, then you'll figure out what's gonna drive you to be successful within that business. Do you wanna keep running a business or do you wanna go back to work for someone else? You, not Michael, your choice. I'm never gonna look down at someone who decides to go, do you know what, this isn't for me. Like, I actually would applaud someone who actually came to me and said, do you know what, I tried, I tried hard, but it, it's not for me. Because we're all different. We all want different things out of life and that's okay. You've just got to be okay with that. You're not going to let anyone down. The only person you're letting down when you're not facing up to it is yourself. So figuring out what drives you to keep going with what you choose to do is going to help you. So when you find that out, write it down. You know why? Because it'll keep you getting out of bed every single day excited. It will keep you focused. Um, there's a heap of notes there, but I don't think I need to cover them. They're just covering old personal stories that are really not too, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> All right, determination is the next one that I want to talk about here because you've got to be committed and you've got to have that mentality of I can and I will and you've got to be a work in progress. So when we go back to what a successful pe person looks like in terms of that list and all the things that they do, that's a work in process. But that determination is what's going to keep you going and striving for more in terms of the goals that you set, no one else. So I, I've got this little photo here because this is my Mackenzie. I photographed her last Friday. Ken's is just the most beautiful soul in the world and every single day she keeps going. We are homeschooling Mackenzie this year. She has dyslexia, so she struggles with education. And she's got all of her own textbooks that she goes through. I don't even have to tell her to do the work. Whereas the other two who are doing online learning at the moment, it's like literally pulling teeth. I don't call it homeschooling, I call it home coping right now. <laughs> and that's why I joke and say, you know, if we're all still alive at the end of this. But this kid, even though she's got some of the biggest challenges and struggles that she faces, she finds this determination to keep doing it every single day and she wants to do it. So you've just got to find that want, what drives you to give you that determination to keep doing it. My family is my biggest drive. I want to provide for my family. My husband joined me in the business six, seven years ago. So now we work together to provide for our family. And we love coming to work. It's pretty cool. I get to wake up every day and do what I choose to do. Um, and then your passion. And you've got to allow your passion to become your purpose. Purpose is the reason for your journey. Passion is the fire that lights your way. Um, and that's a, a saying, and I've, it's got here, author unknown. But if you're doing a genre of photography that you don't enjoy, don't do it. I was doing weddings, I was doing family portraits, and I didn't enjoy them. I literally would feel sick getting in the car to go and photograph an eight, 10 hour wedding. So. I stopped doing them and I remember saying you know, to, to my husband at the time, I just don't want to do weddings anymore. I don't enjoy them. And he's like, but you know, that's, that's your income. And I said, but I know that I can make um, you know, babies work. And I'd even been told by a prior boss when I left working for him 
and he, was a, he ran a big wedding studio. I was a retoucher three days a week. And so when I decided that that wasn't the place for me and I wasn't learning anything, well actually I was, I was learning how not to run a business and treat people um, the way he did. But when I sort of said, yeah, I'm gonna go, and he's like, well, what are you gonna do? And I said, I'm gonna photograph babies because it's what I really enjoy doing. And he said, baby photography is a fad and you won't last in this industry. It will chew you up and spit you out. They were his words to me the day I left working for him. Two years later, he sent all of his staff to me to be trained, and now he has no business because he went bankrupt and he had to give back his Aston Martin. Like that's someone who basically lives in that un in unsuccessful column based on all of those things. They judge everyone else, they have an excuse for everything else, they cannot possibly be blamed for anything. Like even though he had a level of success, he did it in such a bad way, but he was also one of very few wedding photographers at the time that was, um, you know, I suppose the high end, you know, that was quite a while ago. So, you know, it just goes to show when you focus on what it is that you want and your passion, you will find a way to achieve those goals when you really truly want it. So I was passionate and determined and I found a drive not only for my family but, but to prove that jerk wrong. Danielle Fisher just said, hey mate, look at me now. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. <laughs> It's something my child does, and so I just thought it looked cool, yeah, but obviously don't, don't it do didn't. it again. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> oh, hang on. I didn't even click the next slide. You didn't, but... You should have told me. It's okay. Okay. How are we going? Are people bored? No. Everyone's loving it, and so many people, this is what they need to hear, because, you know, even, even with, you know, people that come to the studio and workshops and that sort of thing that we have, this is people's biggest struggle you know, valuing you, your time, your talent to, to do what it is that you want to do, but having a balance because, you know, like Amy said before, you throw yourself in and you just burn yourself out. So totally. you've, got to, you've got to value what you do. All right. Don't be scared to take risks. We've talked a little bit about this. The five fears, failure, success, believe it or not, people are scared of succeeding, yep. um, being mediocre, rejection and risk. So if you put yourself out there and dare yourself, you will be amazed at what you can achieve. You truly will be. If you don't try, you will never know. If you do and you win, you will be happy. If you lose, you will learn valuable lessons. Someone asked me recently, what was the biggest mistake that I made in my business? And like I said, it was many and I love sharing all of those mistakes because if there was a mistake to be made, I made it. But that's how I learned to get through it because there wasn't online education, there wasn't Facebook when I was going through the trenches basically to, to build my business. And um, I had to do it all. And the funny thing was I had a diploma of business but I never really <laughs> applied anything that I learnt whilst studying that to my business. All right, so we talk about setting goals. Um, is what you are doing today getting you closer to where you wanna be? That's a question that you have gotta ask yourself. You have to have something to strive towards in terms of those realistic goals. And you know what, don't be afraid to dream it. I say realistic, but always have that little dream. Like mine was to become a grandmaster. Obviously I did the work, and there was a level of uncertainty on whether or not I would achieve it in, you know, especially in the time frame that I did do it in, but it was a goal that was a dream that I knew one day I would achieve. Um, and then you've got to do the work to get there. Every year you've got to set those new goals, dedicate two days a week. I mean, sorry, not a week, a year. Dedicate two days a year, and I do it in November, on our wedding anniversary, we do it together as a family. We sit down, we write out our own personal individual goals in terms of our health, in terms of you know other things that we do. For me, obviously, um, I have creative, creative dreams that I want to achieve. My husband and I set business goals. We set goals for our family on where we want to be. We 
we talk about all of that and then we ask our kids to set their own goals like what do they want to achieve this year because teaching them now to follow their dreams I just can't wait to see what they do when they get older and this is the thing right now we live in a time where it's okay to tell your kids to follow their heart and to go and do what they love not like what we were told to go to school get good grades get a good job one day you'll get married you'll have a family and then you'll have a really big mortgage and you'll probably hate your job so I love the fact that I'm teaching my kids it's okay to follow their dreams and you've got to get out of your comfort zone and you've got to set yourself new challenges and when setting your goals you've got to be specific measurable and they have to be achievable realistic and timely that is my best advice for setting goals but if you don't dedicate the time to do that you won't have anything to work towards and then you've got a plan um, you know I love this beautiful quote it's by Greg S Reed a dream written down with a date becomes a goal a goal broken down into steps becomes a plan a plan backed by action makes your dreams come true Put in place the steps to reaching your goals, identify your challenges, think positively and stay focused. Have the courage. And there's also a saying by Winston Churchill here, he who plan he or she who plans fails to plan is planning to fail. So it's like your GPS, it plans the route for you when you get in your car. You and your business have to plan the route to get to your destination. Alrighty, so asking yourself why we do what we do, remember that, it's really important. As a photographer, we get so caught up in capturing the next big image that's going to get a million likes and shares on Facebook. Everyone loves to go viral, right? It's amazing feeling when you're getting all of this amazing attention and, and, and at the end of the day, have you benefited from it? All right. When we judge ourselves compared to what other people are also putting out there on the internet, um, you know, we, we tend to feel deflated because we're comparing our everyday work to what someone else is posting but I can guarantee you that they're posting their best work. They're not gonna show you the bad photos that they took during that session. And I can guarantee you that if someone is delivering a client gallery with 20 photos, they're not going to have 20 hero shots that they're gonna to deliver to their client. They will have a couple of really standout photos and I can guarantee you that they're the ones that they're going to share. So don't compare your work and I'm talking about all of the photos and the work that you create to someone's best photo that they've just shared that day. You've got to stop doing that and remember the reason why you're in business of photography. You are in the business of photography to create photographs for your clients, create beautiful memories that mean something to them. The only person that you should be focused on in your sessions is your client because if you all that you're interested in is taking the next big photo, that someone out there on the internet is going to see and share and then it's going to create that you know that viral effect unfortunately your your business is going to suffer because all of your energy and attention is focused there this is when our clients don't feel like they are receiving the level of customer service that they expect for the money they're paying you so when we bring it back to why we are a photographer and why we pick up our camera for our clients, we can focus on them. I, for a long time, was looking at what everyone else was doing. I thought to be a newborn photographer many moons ago that I had to do the froggy pose. I personally didn't enjoy it. I like looking at that particular pose when other people do it well and safely, but it's not my favorite pose. I personally prefer, and this is a personal taste, you know, to make the baby look as comfortable and relaxed as possible in a timeless way. So personally, I, I wasn't into it, but I thought to be a newborn photographer, I had to do it. So when I stopped focusing on what everyone else was doing because they were newborn photographers as well, I'm like, 
I'm just going to do me and they can do them. And that is a wonderful saying. You do you, I'll do me. And focus on your clients and why you're running a business. If you are not interested in servicing your clients and taking photographs that mean something for your clients and all you want to do is create art and share it on the internet to be seen and to get that instant level of gratification that you're looking for, stop marketing to get clients in your studio. Focus on that. Try and sell your work. You've just got to decide what it is that you want. I accidentally changed the slide then. You went on the slide, it's okay. Um, I do have a question from Chris. Chris asks, what advice do you have when you reach burnout? 30 years plus, I've been out of the market for 10 years due to family issues, divorce, etc. Now I'm finding myself wanting to start my business again, but all from a different perspective since watching your live series. Selling from the place of value instead of price has been a great mindset for me. Absolutely. So burnout, sir. Do you know all of the, the advice that I've just given you is the advice that I would continue to give you. You just need to know what it is that you want. Know why you do what you do. Figure out what it is that you want to achieve, why you want to get back into it. What is it that you love about this industry so much? What is it that you love about taking photos? And come from that place of value in terms of how you provide a product and service for your clients. Do you know, I really missed today. I paid the same amount. I'm not going to tell you how much I paid to have my hair cut, especially when you didn't style it properly. It'll look different tomorrow. <laughs> you were talking too much, obviously. I was. We were. I hadn't seen him for a while. Anyway, um, I paid the same amount today that I did when I went in February. It's a little different today right now in terms of the service because of the restrictions and obviously the, um, the spatial distance that you have to have. But normally I would go in and I would never blink at paying what I pay because I would sit down and I would be treated like a queen. I always got a neck rub. They would wave this oil in front of my face and I would close my eyes and instantly when they smoothed, and put pressure on my neck and shoulders, I would relax instantly. So they made me feel important. They made me feel like I was their only focus. It is a higher end salon and that's why I pay to go there because of this service. I may, they make me feel heard and listened to. I always get my hair cut exactly the way I want it. Today he didn't dry it, so it's gone curly because I was in a hurry to get back here. Um, but do you know what? I did obviously miss all of that today, but I still loved going there because whilst I didn't get all of those fancy little things that they normally do from their staff, I got time and I got his attention and I got conversation that was of value because we, we communicated on such a great level. That to me, I, I will continue to pay what I pay to go there because he knows the value of me as a customer. He knows without me as a customer, his business will die and I'll go somewhere else. So that's how we've got to look at our business. How are we making our customers feel? Are they the main focus? Are they the priority? Are you listening? Are you communicating? Are you giving them what they want? Are you asking them what they want? That's all people want is to be heard. All right. Um, I think that slide there. Oh, here we go. Here's another little quote. I'm just going to read it to you because I've got some books there that I wanted to share with you. Life is about balance. Be kind, but don't let people abuse you. Trust, but don't be deceived. Be content, but never stop improving yourself. I think that's a really cool thing to remember every time you do something. You need to go easy on yourself. You need to be focused on you and give yourself the time that you deserve and dedicate and structure that time. Create set working hours, dedicate time to pamper yourself, you know, stop putting everyone else forward, you know, in front of you. Focus on you. It's going to make you, you happier. It's going to make you more content with your life and your business and more focused on where you're going, which is going to make you think clearer 
and remove everything out there that is potentially blocking your vision. Um, books, this is a really cool one, Eat That Frog. Garrett and I always say to each other, just eat that frog <laughs> when we've got things we need to do. Um, Getting Things Done, The Art of, of Stress-Free Productivity by David Allen. Go to Audible. Um, that's obviously audible.com.au, but I'm guessing there are many, many other sites out there that have book, books. So if you're editing, if you're cleaning, if you are on the treadmill, if you're exercising during this downtime, listen to a book. It's easy. Get yourself focused on what it is that you personally want to achieve without thinking about anybody else except for your business, yourself and your family and make it happen. Do the work. No one's going to do it for you and value your time because it is precious. Can I read Amy's comment? Okay. So Amy says, I'm in tears. I've never in a long time felt honest love you're pouring out. The true words people need to hear sometimes. I am good enough. I can say no. I can learn every day, even if it means I wasn't 100% amazing in planning my schedule. I'm not afraid to change it. I'm ready to do even better. I'm ready to give up things I don't love, like weddings, and focus on things that I do love, like babies and toddlers and families. I'm here watching this because I know investing this time in myself by listening to you will come out um, more education and know what I need to do to change. So true. Absolutely. So, so true. I think everyone can go back and just read that comment. We you might know, copy and paste that, put it in a slide one day. <laughs> <laughs> That's so well written. Yeah, do you know what? If you've got if you've got people in your life that are holding you back from what it is that you want to achieve, you need to address that. And stop letting things and people hold you back from what you want you know what you are your own person and you deserve success and I there is nothing I love more than seeing people achieve amazing results and doing the work I couldn't be more proud of of the work that people put in but do you know what frustrates me People who don't do the work, people who want to ride on other people's coattails to reach success, people who want to take shortcuts, that frustrates me. That actually upsets me because they obviously don't value their own time or talent to dedicate that to themselves and their business and their family. They, they, want, a, they want a shortcut. They don't want to learn. They don't want to do the work. And I couldn't be you know, more frustrated, like I said, with people like that. So I love people that want to do the work. I love people who invest in themselves. I love people who want to achieve the success that they deserve. And, and the support that I get from you guys here every day in this group is astounding. The support that I see you give each other is just so incredible. And I think having that support and that community around you, because we can often feel very isolated, especially living in ISO right now, but we can feel isolated in this type of industry because we are continually working as sole business owners, sole traders. So go easy on yourself. It's okay. You will be okay. But remember, you do you and you'll be okay. I'm going to go because we've been going now for an hour and 18 because I can talk. Before we wrap up, can I just ask everyone that is watching, if you know someone who needed to hear this and hasn't been on the live, tag them, message them, let them know that it's here. Um, it will be available to rewatch after we've finished. You can find it in the videos tab, announcements, or on YouTube. But it's going to, it's going to help a lot of people, I think. Yeah, I think the thing is when we titled this work-life balance the thing is we work and we have a life so there's no one size fit all fits all like i said you you just have to focus on your life and your business and you'll be okay all right i am going to go have a great day everyone tomorrow we are back to our regular time of 10 30 and i've been challenged for the craft of the crafting thursday to do a maternity gown of some description. 
not quite sure yet what I'm going to do, but we'll have some fun. And I don't have a maternity model, so we're stuck with our, um, our lovely mannequin that I use during the backlighting. So it'll be a great, uh, a great session, and it won't be a long one, I promise. All right, good night for whoever mentioned before that it's 4am in the UK. Um, I will see you tomorrow. Take care, everyone. Bye.